oxygen breathing life form. There's nothing for you here. It's late night. Here he is, ready to sleepwalk through another 60 minutes. David Letterman. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome uh, to not just another Tuesday program here at NBC for us. No, sir. Tonight is our season premiere. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. There's our, there's our season premiere. Close, close but no cigar, as they say in Stockholm. You know, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> There's a guy, now I don't understand, there's a, a, a guy in our audience, and I said, is there anybody, this is just a second ago, you were here for this, weren't you, Paul? And I said, is there anybody here from a different country, a different part of the globe, a different area of the planet? We always find that interesting when we can find out where somebody is from, if it's a different country. Turned out a guy said, yes, I'm from Sweden. Not, not sounding Swedish, but then how do we know really <laughs> what they sound like unless we have Swedish friends or relatives? And I said, whoa, what, what town in Sweden? And the guy says, makes a big deal out of it. He says, I'd rather not say. <laughs> and, and I assume that this is some kind of little cute little joke. And I say, no, no, that's all right. You're among friends. Please tell us the name of the town in Sweden you're from. No, he wouldn't, he wouldn't tell us. So we took him outside and had him beaten up. <laughs> See, I, I think, I've, I've thought this uh, all my life, that that was the problem with the Swedes. They just didn't have enough pride in their hometowns. <laughs> oh, brother, boy, oh, boy, did it, did it, uh, is it just me, or did the NFL season seem to fly by this year, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, today, uh, Senator Joe Biden admitted that he had... In fact, he had exaggerated a little bit about uh, having been a beetle. And I think that that's, uh... <laughs> what do you think, Kevin? Should we do that one or not? I don't know. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Kevin. Have you lost some weight? <laughs> Kevin looks a little different, doesn't he? <laughs> Well, he's growing his hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, today, one of Justice Bork's uh, supporters pointed out that if confirmed, he would be the first Supreme Court justice in United States history with a last name that is also a comic book sound effect word. <laughs> Guess who was on my flight yesterday, Paul? Coming back from L.A.? That's right. Who? Who was uh, on? Sally Kellerman. Really? Yeah. Now, this is interesting. I've never had this happen uh, for as long as I've been flying. She was sitting behind me, and at some point during the flight, she asked to be moved. Now, <laughs> no, well, I know. I, no, no, that's happened. That, that always happens. <laughs> but, but the reason she wanted to be moved, and I, I never heard this reason. Do you have any idea what it would be, Paul? What, what was the reason? Her seat was not soft enough. Isn't that odd? I've never heard that. Yeah, me, me either. Never and, and, I, and I would guess that pretty, pretty much one airline seat is as soft as they get, right? I would think so. Yeah. I would, I would assume so. <laughs> the show is very close to stopping now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, we have a new Miss America. By gosh, this is pretty exciting. Uh, her name is uh, Kay Lanny Ray Rafko. <laughs> new from Nabisco, but uh, <laughs> Kay Lanny Ray Rafko. A uh, lovely woman who will be on the program tomorrow night. Is that right, Morty? Okay. Be here tomorrow night? Huh? Oh. Yeah, but you, you got to meet the guy from Sweden. What do you... <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, she was the very first person to ever appear at the Miss America pageant with a bare midriff. That is, if you don't count the year that Peter Allen was a judge. So... <laughs> You, you were reading ahead, weren't you? <laughs> oh, gosh, what a... Thanks a lot. Thank you, everybody. David, did you, 
so you had a successful trip to the West Coast? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a grueling ordeal, this thing. The I, Emmys. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, see, first of all, I don't think anybody really cares who wins, who loses, nothing. And the, this, this thing lasted uh, like four hours. Four hours, yeah. Four hours. And, and I just think from now on, if they want to give out awards, that's great. But just, you know, uh, you should be notified by mail, and you can go down to the UPS place and pick them up there. <laughs> You know, it just, uh, I, I don't think anybody really enjoys them. They're a great deal of work, and, uh... So are you uh, saying you worked really hard on the show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Suddenly, oh. in the middle of all of this, I'm, I'm losing the will to live. <laughs> Come on. Let me congratulate you, though, and the writers for picking up the, uh... Oh, the, now, that was nice, sure, the, that the uh, writers... Emmy for best writing. And then uh, Sunday morning also, how many of you got up Sunday morning for the premiere of the Sunday Today Show? Good, because I want to make a, an announcement. They are also going to start a Sunday late night show. Every Sunday night, right? And, really? But it won't be with me. It'll be with uh, Skip Stevenson. But that'll be the, the Sunday late night show. So tune in and... I see. <laughs> That's right, Skip <laughs> Uh, what are we doing here tonight? Huh? We got other things to do, though, don't we? We have a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, you know what we decided we'd do tonight, just for the heck of it? We have this uh, lovely fountain device here, but it's not really a fountain. It's, uh, we have to call it the, the prancing uh, fluids. Yeah. And we turn it on, and water squirts out of there, and it brings joy to the hearts of young and old alike. And, and we thought we would uh, load it up tonight. Instead of using water, tonight we'd use, like, a scope. Just because we think the colored uh, mouthwash in there might be nice, and we're pretty sure that it will suds. Boys, bring out the uh, mouthwash if you got it back there, and then we'll uh, turn it on and see how it goes. Now, is, is that, in fact, mouthwash? Let me... Yeah, well, it's got a pretty good head on it. How many gallons are we putting in there? Twenty. 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 Has, did we experiment with the, the scope in there or not? Nope. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Boy, it's, it's... Paul, it's minty fresh over here. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, doesn't have that old medicine-y smell like the other one. All right. Okay, two more and then we're ready to go. How many bottles did we end up buying? Do you have any idea? 300. Three? 300 <laughs> bottles of... Oh, brother. Boy, the, the druggist must have thought somebody really had a problem. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Now, it's, uh, we've loaded it up with scope. Here we go. We're going to turn it on. Get ready for something. You ready, Paul? Yeah. Okay, the prancing fluids full of scope. There we go. That reminds me of uh, in the old days when I used to get ready to go out on a date. <laughs> I, I, of course, don't date anymore because I'm a broken, lonely shell of a human. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about the top ten? No top ten? We have a machine problem, an equipment problem? Okay, so we'll try and, we'll try and, we'll try and get to that a little bit later. Unless you insist on being poor sports about it. Uh, we got a good show, a show. We're going to bring out uh, Marcello Mastriani in uh, just a moment. But first, I understand that we're ready to go with the uh, top ten tonight. And that's, I'm happy because tonight, as you know, tonight is just not another Tuesday. It's our lovely season premiere. <laughs> See, there's a, supposed to be a thing comes on there. That's broken too, Dave. Oh, that's Hal Gurney, ladies and gentlemen, our, our lovely director, Hal Gurney. I, I think it's nice that there are the Emmy Awards because it, it gives a television one year to, to honor itself because, as you know, the rest of the year it kind of labors in pretty much anonymity. <laughs> um, oh, I've got the wrong card. Top 10 list here on our season premiere. Number 10. Oh, the category. <laughs> yeah. It would, it would uh, help. Yeah, it's, it's the fumes coming off of this thing that's uh. making me a little... Uh, from the home office in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, top 10 NFL strike demands. You know, they're on strike now. I didn't I think that this would happen, but they apparently are on strike. And uh, is it going to be settled? Do we know? Well, that's, that's too bad. Anyway, 
Uh, top 10 NFL strike demands. Number 10, players can smoke on field during point after attempts. Number nine, more endive at salad in pregame brunches. Uh, number eight, looser cups. Number seven, option to skip locker room pep talk to watch up with people halftime show. Number six, Jimmy the Greek must stop wearing Kmart cologne. Number five, no team mascot may be a giant intestinal parasite. Number four, elaborate running plays should be eligible for Tony Award nominations. Well, I've said that for years, damn it. Uh, number three, tighter cups. Number two. Tighter cups. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> number two, more sing-alongs in huddle. And number one, random urine testing of Brent Musburger. There you go. That's just great! Here, here on the season premiere... Forget it. Oh, there. We, we, wait, we have, a, uh, we have a broken cable. Wait a minute, that's not broken, that's been cut! Oh, God, what, what is the point? What is the point? By the way, this show's won awards. That's Did, right. Emmy All right, we'll uh, we'll try and get that uh, repaired. Oh, we can't repair that, can we? No, that's that. We'll have to send that back to the shop. I know. I'm sick about it. I'm on your side, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Uh, let's just bring out our first guest. Might as well. If if anybody can help pull us out of this rut, it would be this, this gentleman man. here. I think that this man embodies on the silver screen more than any other single person the true meaning of international romance. Don't you think so? I think I would have to agree with that. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're looking at me like I've lost my mind. <laughs> the true meaning of international <laughs> I romance. I don't know. I just nice put on going. the suit and come down here. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> what is all this running around? Who stop running around? <laughs> Damn. It's like, it's like a roller rink in here. Now, if, if that's where you're going to stay, stay there, all right? Uh, our first guest tonight, one of the great international stars of our time. This man has been nominated for two Academy Awards and has appeared in films like La Dolce Vita, Eight and a Half, Divorce Italian Style, and his latest is entitled Dark Eyes. Folks, please welcome a man who has forgotten more about women than most of us will ever know, <laughs> Marcello Mastriani. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for being here. Please have a seat. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. here. We have no. I think they just they just fond of you. <laughs> no, I mean, here. are all Italians, immigrants. Uh, we we may have some Italian immigrants in the audience. <laughs> yeah. No, because, <laughs> I thought it was all Italians. No, they just, no. Uh, you're, you're known uh, worldwide, and they, and they love you. Thank you. Where, thank where do you, you make your home nice. in Italy? What? Where, where do you live in Italy? In Rome. Yeah. Not frequently. Uh -huh. I like to go out mm -hmm. for what? many reasons. Uh, other, than, uh, other than Rome, what would be your favorite place in Italy? Uh, in Italy, but Florence, Venice, Milan. Yeah. Also little village, yeah. much better. Lovely country. But you enjoy coming to the United States, don't you? Yes, very much. You like New York all right? Especially New York. New York City. Yes. Uh, have you ever lived in Los Angeles at all? Los Angeles, some little visits. I am not excited about Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm sorry for the... No, no, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, they believe that I'm here yeah. making for the New York people. No, it's, 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 it's very normal. Yeah. First, in Los Angeles, you have always the same waiter. I <laughs> like to put pull over huh? when we wait, October, September, first rainy, yeah. we, we change, yeah. we put uh, something different. Then we have Christmas and snow. Mm -hmm. They're always the same waiter. Yeah. Then uh, I'm, I have a very, my eyes are not strong. 
and uh, I, I cry always in Los Angeles. Mm. Oh, because of the, yeah, the smoke, yeah. yeah. So people believe that's very sensitive. It's not true, just because of the smoke. <laughs> then, uh, architecturally, architecturally, I don't understand this city. It's like House and Garden. You have so many different <laughs> styles. Right. So, frankly, and also, you never see a shit on the ground. A, a piece of tomato. Not possible to say this. Now, what, what exactly did you say there? Oh, yeah. Talking about tomatoes? Tomatoes, pepperoni, some shit, too. I don't want to mean like in Naples. But for example, You've in never Naples, ordered a pizza like that, have you? <laughs> in Naples, you see many cabbage, but fresh cabbage. Cabbage. But fresh. Right. Los Angeles, everything is clean, perfectly clean. Right. But you can't walk. Uh -huh. Because a police may meet there where you are going. I am looking for Gary Cooper, Clark Gable. No, no, no. Yeah. You make mistake. Yeah, it's uh, to, to visit Los Angeles, to really find out what's so great about it, you, you need to spend a little more time than just a couple of days. Because there are some very nice aspects of life there, but it's not immediately apparent sometimes. Well, anyway, perhaps I don't met the, the, the right people the first time I went there. Mm -hmm. That's important. First time you have to... Somebody that introduced you. Sure. Plus I was not, not well introduced. Yeah. And right. all that on the ground was a problem. Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't feel, you don't feel that it's too clean, Los uh, Angeles. Oh, you think it's too clean? Yeah. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, pa parts of it, parts of it may be a little antiseptic. Uh. Well, next time I want to observe uh, um, more intensively. Sorry for my English. Oh no, you, you, you're, you're nothing but completely. More charming. with Marcello Mastroianni. Hey, what wait a minute! What are you trying to pull here? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we have to do a commercial. Oh. You know, I was I was just in Italy. Yes. I, had, I had a wonderful time. It was great. I had a I very nice time. Very People were very, very nice to me. And many, many, uh, yes, <laughs> many. I, I did not notice that, but then again, I wasn't Especially really... Especially in Rome. I went, well, I didn't make it to Rome. Well, next time, when you come, I bring I show you. <laughs> That would be quite a package vacation. Get a call our travel agents now. Uh, we're going to do a commercial. And then... How do you say your name? Marcello Mastroianni. Yeah, that sounds Dito, great. Mastroianni. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, uh, Sunday's edition of the New York Times Magazine, and uh, a very nice article in there. Look what uh, your stomach here. <laughs> I forget to. <laughs> uh, did did you like the article? Me. No, the, I don't. Th I didn't the get article. the impression. Did it's you a like good it? friend, Bill uh, Pepper. It's a good friend. Yeah, I thought it turned out pretty nicely. But it, it brings to mind points up your uh, your life with women, and and I guess your your philosophy and <laughs> let's let's talk I'm about that a little bit. Sixty-three years old. I show you my my document. Sixty-three. It's finished this time. You go on always with this story about Latin love. Each year, each time that I come here. Yeah. Start again, start. Tell us about women. Well, it's, what a destiny! But you, <laughs> it must, it must be a living hell. Uh, but tell us a little bit about your your life with women. Tell us, let's, let's talk about your marriage a little bit. I want to tell you really secret. <laughs> I'm looking, you know, these nice girls that are in the coffee shop. Espresso, mm -hmm. when you're going to espresso, and she said, Oh, yes, ring, ring, mm -hmm. espresso. Right. Yeah, come, somebody else come again. Yeah. Espresso, cappuccino, she, ring, ring, always smiling, nice, simpatica. I'm looking for this woman, for this girl. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, I am in time. <laughs> because I would like a girl about uh, 25, 26. Right. No, younger. 28, 28, 32, 33. Yeah. <laughs> Possible 40. <laughs> but nice. Always uh -huh. that with love. Come si dice? Sorridendo. Mm -hmm. With the uh, coffee. Yeah. 
Rintri, commendatore, buongiorno. Un caffè, come al solito, yes. Yeah. Drink, drink. At night she come back home tired. Mm -hmm. Drink, drink, this the drink, yeah, drink. Sure. Yeah. And I say, go to sleep, baby. Yeah. Go to sleep quietly. And, and at Christmas, like a present, as a present, you give her uh, a cash. Drink, drink. <laughs> you give her her own cash drink, register. Drink. Yes. <laughs> I don't ask for... No, you don't. You're you certainly a, a man of modest that desire. That would be now ideal for me. Yeah. Now, you, you say all of this, and it sounds very nice, and, and, and I'm sure that you'll find this woman at some... I hope. Yeah. But uh, you, you have a... You have a, well, a, a, a wife? Yes, I have a wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, see... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see... But if she don't like coffee or cappuccino, what I do? <laughs> <laughs> but now that's... I am more serious than what you believe. You yeah, know. but... I know that you have not this kind of... Uh, I want to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. This is my pretension. Mm -hmm. uh, now, yeah. um, but is, is that a, a personal way of life or is that a, a European way of life? Would we see more of that in Europe than Italian we Italian life, that's sure. Uh -huh. Every, every man know. has a wife and also dates and sees, a, sees other women? I have many friends in this position. Yeah. I can say the name. Uh, no, we don't I really can, need the I name. can no. tell the name, uh -huh. but uh, I have uh, many friends, yes. Uh -huh. and, uh, we are generous. I'm sorry? We are generous. Oh, you're generous? Yes. Yeah. So, so you see it as doing a favor for... In a certain way. <laughs> believe me, because we believe to be astucious, uh, smart. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Because when you want too many things, finally... You have nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you pay. We sure. are victims. I see. That's yeah. it. But you're you're able to maintain a happy relationship with your wife. Yes, if well, I she, I, I'm guessing she must be a very very special person to put up with us. Yes, much more intelligent than me. That's oh. sure. <laughs> yes. Well. <laughs> let's uh, let's take a look at. Uh, for, oh, you must be very excited about the film. Uh, it's opening the New York Film yes, Festival. Yes, I'm very happy about it. Dark the Eyes is the name yes, of the motion picture? Yes, beautiful. Is, can you tell us a little bit about it, and then we'll see some here? It's the story of a married man that he go to look for a young girl in Russia. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, we all sit here? Okay, this is uh, a couple of seconds from the uh, new motion picture, Dark Eyes, starring uh, Marcello. <laughs> see there, that's... Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very Thank much you for your time. You. Enjoy your stay in the United States. on the program, we're saying goodbye to one of our most popular regular guests. And, you know, it's hard to put my feelings into words at this moment, but luckily I can just read off these cards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here now, the farewell performance of the big man. gentlemen of the studio audience. Home viewers across America and in the territory, servicemen and women who are watching on the Armed Forces Network, Mr. President and your charming wife, the Special Joint Assembly of Congress, Your Holiness, TV's entire Van Patten family. I come before you tonight for the last time. For a while, I ruled the small screen like a tyrant lizard king. But now, like the dinosaurs before me, my time has passed. I will answer your questions and then be gone. So I might turn up again on the new Hollywood squares. Who's got the first question? This is just great. We have Marcello Mastriani and this guy on the same show. <laughs> not, not to mention a wading pool full of uh, mouthwash. Who has the uh, first question for... Hi, how are you? What's your name, sir? Tim. Tim nice Frank. to have you here, Tim. Where do you live? I live in Stroudsburg. Uh -huh. Stroudsburg being... In Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And what do you do there? I'm a college student. Oh, where do you go to school? ESU. What East Stroudsburg you... University. And what are you studying? I'm studying communications. Ah, so you want to get into broadcasting. Well, yeah. Okay, good for you. Do you have a question uh, for uh, the big man? This is his farewell performance. Yes, I do. It's, it's about my girlfriend. She won't eat anything. Anything. 
Well, let me get this straight, Tim. Your girlfriend avoids eating all meals. She sounds like a cheap date. Ha, 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 All kidding aside, pal, get rid of her. She sounds like trouble. But I'll tell you what. Since this is my last night, I'm gonna let you have a souvenir. One of my enormous arms. Pull her out of the socket, guys. Ah, ah, ah. I hope that makes you happy. There you are. Congratulations. Hope you enjoy that. More than I ever expected. Okay, who has... Uh, when are we, we going to get to the good parts, Larry? Uh, who, who has the next question for Mr. Moe? Hi, how are you? What's your name, sir? Rob Stavis. Nice to see you, Rob. What do you do for a living? I work on Wall Street. Well, you look very prosperous. Thank you, Dave. I wish I was. Oh. Uh, what, what, is the, uh, what is the question uh, for uh, the big man? Well, big man, since the beginning of 1987, there's been an unusual divergence of returns in the stock and bond markets. What's caused this, and what do you think the implications are for the future? Good question. <laughs> you know, something just occurred to me. When most people retire, they get a cake and flowers. Or maybe some golf clubs. What the hell did I get? <laughs> I didn't get squat. <laughs> Robert, I'm much too depressed to answer your question. But I'm going to give you my necktie and my right arm. <laughs> Take them away, boys. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. One more? All right. We, we have time for one more question, and I, and I think we're all interested in seeing just what it is you'll be giving away now. <laughs> yes, ma'am, what is your name? Linda Shorter. Nice to see you, Linda. Where are you from? Waldorf, Maryland. Jeez, you look great. Thanks. What do, what do you do there good. in Maryland? Uh, well, I go to school here in Long Island. Oh, I see. What are you studying? Elementary education. Oh, great. We, we need good teachers. Are, you think you'd be a good teacher? I hope so. You'll be fed up in a week. <laughs> uh, and you have a question? Yes. My right ear has been blocked for several days now. How I've got I... that trouble. <laughs> oh, this will be good. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> How can we solve this problem? <laughs> Linda, you're my last question. And what a disappointment you are. <laughs> I'd hope to go out on a high note. But instead, I've sunk to talking about your blocked up ears. <laughs> I don't care what you do. <laughs> Boys, give this person my legs and throw in the size 65 quarter of an hour. Nice meeting you. Good luck to you. Be careful with these. Thanks, gentlemen. Is that it? Oh, good. All right, folks, we'll be right back after this commercial. <laughs>